Now, one of the biggest challenges currently facing African states is a high growth of informal settlements in the urban centers. Now, Kibera is one of Africa's largest slums and is located within the capital city of Nairobi, houses almost half of the city's population. And now a new developing eco town is empowering Kenya's urban poor by giving them a chance to own a home in Kapute. Patrick Wahome went to Kapute and filed the story. As Kenya makes strides to elevate its economic status, a large portion of the population lives below the poverty line. It is estimated that the sprawling Kibera slums account for 2.2 million of Nairobi's 5 million residents. In this slum environment, water and sanitation are luxuries that are hard to come by. Against this background, a new town fully funded by a microfinance and social enterprise is offering new hope for the slum community, allowing them to own homes and get hands-on training at the construction site of Kapute, the eco-town about 30 kilometers from the capital Nairobi. I was blot in slums, so I want to leave that mentality of being a slum dweller. I stay a good life. I had never thought I would ever own a home, but this project has enabled me to realize that dream. Microloans and mortgage facilities have given a lifeline to the working poor in the slums of Nairobi. And the Kapute project, managed by Jamii Bora Trust, is giving this community a chance to put a roof over their heads. Jamii Bora has grown to 225,000 members. Very, very successful and fast-growing microfinance organization. Not only do they help with microfinance, but they help with things like microinsurance and savings. They help with uh, health care. They help with disaster, they have a disaster fund, and they continue on building additional rungs on the ladder for the poor to climb out of poverty. We are developing 2,000 residential units. Every unit has two bedrooms, sitting room, kitchen, bathroom, toilet, and a kitchen garden. We have an, an area set aside for a business, a central business district where members who have like 3,000 business premises. So they're able to actually continue with their income generating activities here in Kapte. We have areas for churches and even a mosque. We have a place for the administration like the chief's office, the police, even a post office and a, 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 an annex which will be built by St. Mary's Hospital. So it's a town that you can say is self-sustaining. Kapte now becomes one of Africa's first microfinance eco town, complete with solar energy, a water and sewerage recycling plant to prop up an in-house irrigation scheme. We have a constructed wetland where we will collect, we are, we, we are actually collecting now and uh, cleaning, biologically cleaning the sewer to recycle it so that the same water is used in the toilets to flush the toilets and to water the gardens. Everything that is being created here is being created by Jamibora members. There's a factory producing the bricks and the tiles, all the infrastructure, wells being dug, solar electricity, it's the first eco-town. All of that is being done by members who are former beggars in the slums of Nairobi. So not only is it a place to live, but it's also got employment all around it uh, for those very same people. Sustainability is a critical aspect in poverty alleviation and giving the urban poor expertise in fields they can be competent in will go a long way into rebuilding the slum economy. If you were to just get roughly how much it, each, each of these units is costing, a two-bedroom house here is going for about 350,000 shillings. The, the monthly payment is um, 3,500. You can get that kind of thing here in Nairobi for such a, a house with a flush toilet, with a water, you know, piped water, everything, you know, it is, it is self-contained. I, I think that, that is fairly, fairly cheap. The ambitious project is a new turn in how the issue of housing has been tackled in the past. But what remains to be seen is if this Kapute model will be replicated across Africa. I think there are four things that need to be done if Capote is going to expand and be replicated. The one is it needs support. It needs support from on high, government support. 
uh, support when the government says, hey, something can be done to reduce poverty and destitution in Africa, in Kenya. Let's do it from the bottom up instead of from the top down. Support that way. Second, it needs social entrepreneurs like Ingrid Monroe. Entrepreneurs that are drawn to not only making money in the world, but making a difference in the world, making a difference in people's lives. More social entrepreneurs. The third, it's going to need capital. It's going to need capital from various sources, philanthropic capital and commercial capital. So that's the third. And the fourth, it's also going to need uh, people. It's going to need believers. Jami Bora has done a wonderful job building a membership of people who are climbing their way out of poverty. As the world grapples with struggling economies, microfinance and social entrepreneurship are offering a way out for some of the poorest families in Kenya. And it is hoped that the full benefit and potential of the sector can be fully tapped at the government level for the benefit of citizens. Patrick Wahome, CNBC Africa, Nairobi.